This podcast contains bad language. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the same 24 Hours podcast. This is Notes on Nonsense, the weekly show where I, your host, Meredith Atwood, pick a topic and discuss why it's nonsense. Each week, you'll get a challenge to walk away from and maybe more information about me than you ever cared to know. So my new book, The Year of No Nonsense, How to Get Over Yourself and On With Your Life, is available December 17th. And Notes on Nonsense was born out of this book. So The Year of No Nonsense is what is happening in 2020. I started my Year of No Nonsense midway through 2017, and everything changed. Every single thing changed when I decided to get rid of the nonsense in my life. So this week's topic is rock bottom is bullshit. At the end of 2014, I was what Lisa F. Smith, the author of The Girl Walks, A Girl Walks Into a Bar, would say, I was someone who was circling the drain. And what I mean is I was doing all sorts of destructive behaviors that were literally leading to the bottom of my newest rock bottom. I talk about this in my book in great detail, but at the end of 2014, everything was really kind of dark for me in many ways. When I look back on that time, there was absolutely no reason, absolutely no reason for me to hit rock bottom. There was no reason for me to be circling the drain when I look back and I think about it. However, there was a reason, and the reason is I had a lot of trauma, difficulties, stress, my own and other people's that I was carrying, and over the course of my lifetime, I developed certain coping mechanisms that helped me survive in this world. Many of us are looking at our lives, and we think we need to lose weight, We think we need to eat better. We think that we need to exercise more. And all of these things are absolutely 100% true. However, the issues that you are perceiving in your life, chances are that you developed those habits, those tendencies, the way you act, the way you don't act, the way you lay in bed instead of getting up. Chances are you developed those out of a very big reason. You learned to cope with your life through that habit. So when I look back on my life at the end of 2014 and I say I don't have any reason to be at rock bottom, that's not actually true because I had plenty of reasons. All of those reasons were things I learned throughout my life to cope with a lot of big, nasty shit that I developed during childhood that was put upon me during childhood that carried on through the teen years and into adulthood. The interesting thing, however, is that a lot of times we look at our habits, we look at the things we're doing, like drinking and overeating and smoking and doing drugs and porn and affairs and alcoholism, I already said drinking, but alcoholism, which I think is a different ball of wax, actually, um, coupled with all sorts of other behaviors that maybe I didn't even name, shopping, people pleasing. I mean, you can really come up with quite a list when you think about it, but you take all of these actions and we are thinking, oh my God, I'm such a bad person. I do all these things, but you are not a bad person. You are merely coping the best way you know how by these habits. These habits, which were created likely during early, early teen years to early adulthood, to cope with the shit that was put upon you or that you experienced or that you underwent during your childhood and teenage years. Think about that. We are not here to blame our childhood. We are not here to blame other people, even though they may totally be at fault. That's not the purpose of our lives. However, if you feel that you are circling the proverbial drain, if you feel that you are at the rock bottom of your life, I want you to take a breath. You are not at rock bottom. You know why? Because you're here. It may feel like rock bottom, but you are merely drowning in a sea of your own coping mechanisms. Now hear me out for a minute. This is all a great snowball effect. In my book coming out, I talk about how you have to get to the truth You have to get to the core and you have to keep peeling your proverbial truth onion in order to figure out where all of this started 
or in the alternative, what your biggest bleed is. And for me, when I look back on my life in 2014, my biggest bleed in my life was my drinking habit. This drinking habit was developed out of the necessity to not be harmed, to not be controlled, and to not think about what happened during my childhood. It was a coping mechanism. It made me feel good until it didn't. So what is the biggest bleed in your life? That, my friends, is what is making you feel that you are at rock bottom. The biggest bleed in your life is the biggest thing standing in the way of your health, happiness, and success at this moment. And you may think you need to lose weight. You may think you need to do more yoga. You may think you need to lose 10 pounds. But what you might need to lose is your two bottle of wine a day habit, the cigarettes you are smoking, the McDonald's you're driving through, or perhaps it's some relationships that are in your life. And I don't necessarily mean that you need to cut people out of your life. But what I do mean is there may need to be some boundary setting that has not taken place yet. Hear me out a little further on this one. In our lives, go check out the episode called Other People Are Bullshit (laughs) because I cover this a little bit in there. But other people in our lives, yes, life is about relationships and love and support, but somewhere along the way, we probably have developed a few unhealthy relationships and those unhealthy relationships in turn impact the relationship with ourselves. Until we come to the truth about our past, our current habits, and our current relationships, we are unable to move forward. The episode being stuck is bullshit. Yeah, I mean, you might actually stay stuck if you don't deal with your shit. Your shit has a big, wide range, and it can be anywhere from eating a million um, Reese's Cups, or what season are we in? Oh, have mercy, it's Halloween tomorrow. (laughs) Eating a million Reese's Cups, eating a million jelly beans, whatever it is, whatever holiday-shaped Reese's peanut butter concoction is out there, which is my kryptonite. It may be that that is the nonsense behavior in your life. However, you're probably doing that behavior for a reason. Overeaters. Over drinkers, smokers, addicts, porn addicts, shoppers, people pleasing. All of these things are because you are trying to gain significance and cope in the way that you have learned to cope. And the problem is when we're encountering problems as humans, we often encounter these problems at a very young age. So we are exposed to a tremendous amount of bullshit or a tremendous amount of pain and suffering at a young age. And so we learn to cope in a way that a child copes. The issue is we continue these behaviors and these coping mechanisms when we're adults. So for a moment, I want you to do something for me. I want you to picture yourself as a child, the child version of yourself. And next time you reach for that soothing mechanism, whether it's alcohol or food or over-exercising or whatever it is on your list that you're doing to make yourself feel better, I want you to picture yourself as a child version of yourself. And I want you to forgive her. I want you to take a moment and I want you to forgive that version of yourself. You know why? Because she didn't do a damn thing wrong. She's just trying to survive in this crazy world. So when you think of yourself at rock bottom, I want you to pause and I want you to think of this young version of yourself who's just trying to cope with things she doesn't understand or things that are harmful or painful. I I talked to my therapist about this and he was the one who mentioned, you know, you've got a child version of yourself, a teenage version, and an adult version, and they're all different. And at any given moment, one of those characters is showing up. And oftentimes, the little child is the one that wants to eat. The little child is the one that just wants love to be told that she doesn't have to be perfect. That version of you is the one that is probably speaking up more than any other at the moment. And you're punishing her. Stop punishing her. Be kind to her. And that was really impactful for me. And I felt myself getting a little softer toward myself when I learned about that method of dealing with things. And here's why. I have a 10, almost 11-year-old daughter. And my my therapist said, hey, can you imagine talking to yourself or talking to Stella, your daughter, the way that you're talking to yourself, the way that you're treating her, the way that you're angry at her, the way that you are abusing yourself? Could you imagine doing that to your daughter? 
And of course, the answer is absolutely not, and I would murder anyone who did, right? And chances are, if you have children or puppies, it doesn't matter. If you have someone in your life that you hold dear to you, can you imagine treating them like you are treat treating yourself when you perceive yourself at the bottom of your rock bottom? Rock bottom is bullshit only because one, it's a feeling. It is not real. Number two, you are coping under a tremendous amount of pain, stress, anxiety, and probably chemicals. Chemicals in the way, if your addiction is food or cigarettes or alcohol or drugs, you also have another special layer of chemical imbalance that is probably sending you into a tizzy. And I am not kidding about this, you guys. When I have too much sugar, I am a nightmare. I am, I am so depressed. I am unreasonably unhappy. Things do not feel right. Chemicals matter. <laughs> they really do. And if you are coming up in the morning with a ton of caffeine and coming down at night with whatever substance, whether it's alcohol or drugs, you are dealing with chemicals that are another layer of your current mood. So I don't want to preach about that necessarily, but I want you to step back and realize my challenge for you is to step back if you feel that you're at rock bottom and I want you to take a good hard look at what's going on. And I don't want you to blame yourself and I don't want you to blame anyone else at the moment. I want you to just get to the truth view. I want you to look and I want you to see. And if you can be real with yourself, the status of what is going on in your life and then look at what version of yourself might be reacting to the current situation? Is it the young child who just wants love, support, comfort, and security and does not feel safe? If you're talking and you're dealing with that version of yourself, I want you to forgive her. She doesn't, she didn't do anything wrong. She's just you and she's scared. And a lot of times we are not understanding that we are just doing these destructive, terrible things because we're trying to cope. We're trying to survive. We're desperately trying to find a way out of the pain we are in. So take a deep breath. I know I need to. <laughs> and I want you to say after me, repeat after me, I am not at rock bottom. Rock bottom is bullshit. I have simply developed some unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with the pain in my life and the young version of me is hurting right now and I'm going to be kind to her. I hate the concept of self-love and self-care because I think people are putting band-aids over what's really going on. When you hear people preaching about self-care, take a bubble bath, go for a walk, feed yourself green stuff, that's all excellent. But that's not what we're dealing with here. A lot of people who are healed by kale are not in as much rock bottom trouble emotionally, spiritually, psychologically as some of us are. Those of you who feel that you're at rock bottom, you don't need a kale smoothie. You need to look at what's really going on and figure out how you can heal, how you can develop better coping mechanisms for your suffering. And you need to also identify what is causing you this pain. And this, my friends, is not necessarily fun. This is not necessarily a process you're going to enjoy wholeheartedly. You're not going to necessarily be like, hey, that Meredith Atwood girl, she really made me feel good with this one. No, I'm probably not going to. And I'm sorry for that. But I will tell you that once you figure out that you are not at rock bottom, you are just dealing with your shit and you're doing it in the best way that you've known how up until you heard this, up until recently, up until you made some really great waves or strides with your own life that you don't need to cope with your life with drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and sugar addiction. You don't need to. That doesn't mean you're going to get it perfect. That's the problem. So many of us are like, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do better. And you go three or four days and then you fall off the wagon. There is no wagon. Wagons are bullshit. See prior episode. <laughs> but you fall off and then you determine that you're a piece of shit and you have the voice of whatever authority figure in your life told you the same thing and you just provided them evidence of why you're also a piece of shit. Lather, rinse, repeat. We have to break this cycle. You are not at rock bottom. You are just coping. So how do you get out of it? 
My challenge for you this week is not to fix yourself because you're not broken. You're also not at rock bottom. You're just hurting. I want you to identify this week what is causing you the most suffering in your life at this moment. And I want you to try and stop that bleed. In 2014, when I was at my greatest source of suffering, my greatest bleed was drinking. Nothing could be fixed until I dealt with my biggest bleed, which was drinking. When I decided to quit drinking, and I didn't do it for a whole another year, but I dabbled. And when I did that, when I said, no more, I'm done with this, things began to seriously change. Now, in order to quit drinking, I had to develop other coping mechanisms for my pain. That is the next step. This is all extremely hard, you guys. I get this. My episode, Hard as Bullshit, is not about this because this really is tough stuff. But if you're ready to change and you're tired and you feel that you are at rock bottom, I want you to repeat after me, I am not at rock bottom. I'm just ready to fix some things that I can control. It's a lot, you guys. But you got it. You got it. Once you see the truth and you start to have compassion toward the version of yourself that is suffering, things can begin to change. So hang in there. Thanks for listening. Until next time.